Hello guys and welcome to the video about breaking down vocabulary. We are entering week three and this is uh, a course on vocabulary deconstruction. Maybe I should say construction and deconstruction. So I just want to review definitions and terminology that we use when I'm when I'm talking about this. So this is a good place to start at the beginning of our week. So I'm going to show you a PowerPoint that I put together to just run through the basics. And then at some point I will ask you to take a quiz just to make sure that you do understand all the terms. So let me share my screen with you and let's get started. OK. So hopefully where did you go? There we are. All right, so you should see my screen now that says breaking down vocabulary. So we're going to begin and you will have a handout that has all of this on it, but we will begin with the basic basics. We'll start with letters to syllables, roots, base and what affixes are. So these are the parts of, of words that we are going to learn about so we can deconstruct and construct. Okay see. All right, so of course we begin with letters and in English our letters are the alphabet consisting of vowels A, E, I, O, U and and then consonants. OK, and we take those letters and we put them together to form words and within each word we have syllables and those syllables always have a vowel sound in each syllable. So for every vowel sound you hear, that's a syllable. And again, as I've mentioned before, when you hear a syllable, your jaw drops because we are expelling air out of our mouth. So we're opening and dropping our jaw. So we can also say not only is the vowels A, E, I, O, U, we can add Y because Y sometimes sounds like I or E. So if we look at our examples, the first word is happy. Two syllables, two vowel sounds, A in hap, P E in P. So the Y sounds like a vowel. So two syllables. So remember syllables just a part of a word that is pronounced as a unit. Let me turn off my AC. Sorry about that. OK, so syllables. Happy, happy. You can see it comes down when we say a syllable. Capable, capable. One, two, three. A, A, O. A, A, O. Capable. Information. Information, I, o, e, shun, un, un. Okay, so those are our syllables. So we break those down. Now, each word that we have, we can break it down to what's called a base word, or sometimes we call it a root word. And basically, what that is, it's words that we build on. OK, so we add to these bases. A base is like, you know, what you start with. You have building blocks. All right. And we add to it. And so we add what's called affixes. And the word affix means to attach. So we're going to stick it. We're going to attach it to that base word. And then that's going to change the way we use our word or the meaning of the word. OK. So we'll learn about that in just a minute, but let's look at the root and the base. OK, so the first thing we're going to talk about is root words. Now, root words for the most part do not stand alone. That means that you cannot use them in a sentence unless you add a prefix or a suffix. For example, and our words come from Greek or Latin. And so they're broken down into small. There are just thousands upon thousands of root words. Miss B doesn't even know them all. 
but there are many, many, many root words. So there's the root word here, and it's odd, A-U-D, and we pronounce it odd, okay? So that's, but we don't use that word by itself, okay? So a root word typically does not get used alone. We add to it. So it has to do with hearing. This one is from the Latin language and it means it has to do with the hearing. So um, we have words that we make from it, audit, auditorium, you can see the pictures here. Uh, we have audio, sound, okay? And so audition, where you speak for something. So that's one. Now, there are always exceptions. So there are some root words and these are Latin and Greek, but remember, most cannot be used alone. So, for example, here are some root words that can stand alone. So, act, which means to move or to do something. So, we can say, don't act that way. Okay, so we use it by itself without adding a prefix or a suffix. Or we can say, actor, and it's the person or acting, and it's the action, or reenact, it's to react. So some of the other words are legal, norm, phobia. These are all root words. Now, base words, and so you're gonna hear people that, um, <laughs> that use these interchangeably, okay? Don't worry too much if they say root or base words. OK, You're, you hear that a lot. It's just kind of like in grammar. You hear progressive and continuous and they're they're meaning the same thing. OK, it's continuing. It's progressing on. So a base or a root word just means a word that you're building. You're building other words with. OK, so now let's look at base words. For some reason, I'm flipping past. Let's see if I can get to the next word. I'm going to. OK, all right. Well, base words can be used by their self. OK, they can stand. We say they can stand alone. All right. They're kind of like a tree, a root word. You can't stand on a root, but a tree has a big base at the bottom and you could stand on it. OK, so they can stand alone. So, for example, my word here is cycle, cycle. That word we can use. There's a 24 hour cycle every day, but then we can also say bicycle or cyclist or cycling or cycler. So we have many forms using that base word. We can build on it. OK, so we have root words, base words. Both of them are just the beginning of other words. OK. Next, let's make sure we understand what a word form is. Now, a lot of people think, oh, what's the word form? It's, oh, it's a noun. Oh, oh, that's a verb. Maybe it's an adjective. Well, honestly, those, that's kind of correct. But honestly, a word form is just different ways, different words that you can form from the base word. So let me say that again. A word form is a new word that you can form from a base word. So every word that you form from a base word is a word form. OK, so it's a new word. So for example, we build on them with our affixes. OK, so here I have the word happy and happy is my base word. It can stand alone. OK. But I can add a prefix to it or I can add suffixes to it and I have happy, unhappy, happiness, happily. These are all different forms of the word happy. So I could say, what's a word form of happy? Happily. What's another word form of happy? Unhappy. OK, so those are different words built from the base word. All right. Now we're going to move to word families. 
I just want you to think, what's a family? Is everybody in your family? Most of the time, not always, depending on where you're from, you have the same last name or the same family name, okay? But you're all different. So word forms make up the word family. So the family just means all the words that you can make from a base word. So here's my family tree, okay? And so I took the word work, and then I made all these other words from work, and they're my family. Okay, they're different word forms, but together I call them my family. They're my word family. So you'll have an assignment later on, and I will say, I want you to make a word family with this word. How many words can you make? How many words can you form? Okay, and all of them combined are your family. You do this by adding the affixes, okay? Now, parts of speech. Sometimes we get that, you know, we think, oh, that's the word form. Well, the parts of speech, that's what I'm talking about when I say, what, what part of speech is happy? Well, it's an adjective. Or happily, it's an adverb, okay? So parts of speech, that's your, that's the job. That's the grammar category that you put the words in, that, that we know now how to use that word in a sentence. Now, Let's kind of finish this up with our affixes. Remember what I said about affixes? It means to stick or to attach or to fasten, okay? So I'm going to stick to something and um, it's going to attach either before or after a base word, okay? Now, we have prefixes. Pre in prefix means before. So it's, it's letters that go before that attach to a base word, okay? So prefix, pre means before, they go before the word. Now, what does a prefix do? It kind of has a job. Well, a prefix its sole purpose, its sole job is to change the meaning, okay? So if I add pre, it means before something, okay? So <clears throat> here's a list here. I have anti, which means against. So if I'm anti-social, it means I'm not a very social person. I'm against going to parties. I don't, I like to be alone, okay? Or, um, <clears throat> Dis means opposite of. Sometimes we say not, but opposite of, okay? I dislike. It's the opposite of liking, right? Um, I disagree. I don't agree. I do not agree. So we can kind of think opposite or not. So these are some prefixes. They always change the meaning, all right? Now let's look at our other affix, which is suffixes. Now, suffixes, su has the same background as sub, which we will learn is under. So it's like when you attach to the last part of the word. So suffixes go under the word, so they go after the word. Okay, so suffix are always after the base word. Now, what do they do? They don't necessarily change the meaning. They can a little bit but typically the meaning is pretty close to what it was. But the main thing they do is they change the part of speech. Okay, very important here. So when we look at sentences and vocabulary, these are things that help us when we see a word and we don't know what it means, if it has prefixes, that will help us to dissect it and figure out what it means. So prefixes tell the part of speech, but they also can tell us the tense. So if it's ed, it's going to be past tense. If it's ing, it's it's continuous progressive, okay? Or it might be plural, telling us if it's plural or not, if we add the s or es. So that's our suffix. So in a nutshell, let's go back. 
we have letters that make syllables that form words. And when we take those words and we build on them, that's called the root or the base. And we can, each time we build a word, it's called a word form. It's a new word form. And if they all have the same base, it's a word family. We love our family. And then how we build those is we use prefixes before, changes the meaning, and suffixes afterwards, changes the part of speech, the tense, sometimes the meaning, but mostly not, okay? All right, I hope this is helpful. We need to know all these terms and these definitions. Now you can study, take the quick quiz, and we'll move on. See you next video.